Hey guys, me, Robert Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. So it's really all about what's next. Our big first storm system now departing. Now it's all about this next storm system that will move into northern California, Oregon, and then send a heavy band of snow out through Idaho and then into the, uh, the Tetons. And then eventually that storm system will develop uh, down around the four corners and become a Colorado area of low pressure. So the Wasatch, you've got some light snow, 3.5, 3.6, and a moderate shot of snow on 3.7 as that low dives down towards the four corners. Tetons, heavy snow. What an incredible stretch this has been. And there's some uh, heavy snow on the way, one to two feet between the afternoon of 3.5 and the morning of 3.6. 3.6 will be a big powder day. Colorado, you've got some light snow, 3.5, 3.6, and 3.7 kind of scattered with light accumulations. And then a moderate heavy shot with the main area of low pressure that becomes a Colorado low on 3.8 and 3.9. I'll show you what that looks like coming up with the forecast radar. In the northeast, you've got rain on 3.5 and 3.7, and then still potentially some snow 3.10 and 3.11. All right, here's water vapor satellite imagery this afternoon and evening. So our big initial storm system now spinning away. So that's exiting the region. Here comes our next area of low pressure. This is the one that's going to affect northern California and Oregon, and then eventually it's going to send this band of snow out through Idaho and the Tetons. And the energy will eventually split and dive down and become a Colorado low, 3.8 and 3.9. So that's the evolution. Let me show you what this looks like at the, at the jet level. So here's the latest forecast, end of day today. Here's tomorrow. Here comes our area of low pressure. You can see the dip sliding into California and Oregon. And that sends that heavy belt of snow out. And then eventually that low and the trough dives down towards the four corners. And there's your development on 3.8 through Colorado, northern New Mexico. And that should help to enhance some of the snowfall across Colorado as a result, and even northern New Mexico. Then that moves away, and the pattern will start to favor the Pacific Northwest. You can see the area of low pressure up there. But that whole thing will drop down by 313. So we're looking at some heavier snow through the Pacific Northwest, 310, 11, 12. And then the whole thing dives back down into the interior states of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado by 313 and probably 314. Here's some uh, precip on top of all of this. So this is at 530 today. That's what's left over. Um, some light snows through Colorado, the Wasatch, and the Tetons. But all that is drying out. Here comes the influence from the next storm system. You can see what happens. The main energy dives down <clears throat> towards the four corners. And here's that area of low pressure that develops across Colorado. This is 3.8 in the morning. You can see some of the snow being thrown over the top of Denver, down to 5280 and across the eastern plains. Snow down in northern New Mexico as that low spins up. There's 3.8 in the afternoon. And by 3.9 Saturday, some leftover light snow, but the whole thing dries out. And then everything starts to favor the Pacific Northwest and B.C. Until we get to 3.13, then the whole thing drags down into the, uh, drags the precip down into Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Okay, let's hear my latest numbers. Let's look at the totals. So the new grand total map through late 313 looks like this. About a foot of total snow on the way for the Wasatch, two feet or more for the Tetons. <clears throat> Unbelievable stretch. In Colorado, most places 6 to 14, and um, you know that doesn't all come at once. It's pretty spread out. About a foot up in Idaho, looking pretty good in the Pacific Northwest and interior BC, especially Red Mountain and Fernie. But it uh, looks like one to two feet up there from uh, Washington, Oregon, up into parts of uh, Whistler at about three feet. Excellent stretch. Shasta also gets nailed. All right, let me break it down by time period. So this is 3-4, rest of today through tomorrow. And that heavy snow moves into the Tetons. Afternoon of 3-5 continues into 3-6. So just this first period, a foot on 3-5 in the afternoon. Um, and Colorado, some light additional snow. Uh, looks like a pretty good number there for Sun Valley at 8, and Shasta gets 16. Second period, 3-6 through 3-8, we add another 10 in the Tetons. So that's, you know, you're at 2 feet basically at, the, at, that, at that point by the time you finish up on 3-6. Um, as, it, as that front and that storm system dives down towards the four corners on 3-7, the Wasatch gets 6 to 8 inches. And then look at the snow in Colorado potentially 4 to 10 in this time period on 3.8, 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. Last time period, um, so this is 3.9 through 3.13. Um, some additional light snow in Colorado on 3.9. 
and then that low exits, and then everything becomes about the Pacific Northwest, and see the big totals there, and then the whole thing dives down by 313 into parts of uh, Wyoming, Utah, and you'll start to pick up some accumulation on 313. All right, let's go to the Northeast. So the numbers have ticked back up just a little bit here. So again, you're looking at some rain early in the period, 3537, and then potentially some snow if the temperatures are cold enough because they look marginal right around 310 and 311. That's when we'll pick up the bulk of those numbers that you see right there. All right, we'll end on the grand total map here. Grand totals by late 313. Some places still have some, some excellent snow yet to go, in particular the Tetons looking very good during this time period. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon. Mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.